Cane Bay, the good, the bad, and the entire show. I am going over five reasons why Cane Bay may have you running, but you need to stick around to the end where I'm gonna give you three reasons why you should actually move into Cane Bay. Yeah, I was confused too. We're confused. So recently I did a video about 20 minutes overview of Cane Bay. It ended up being closer to 45 minutes, but it's because there's so much to talk about. And the following evening, I actually ran into somebody who was like, well, you talked all these great things about Cane Bay. So Ryan, what are like the bad things about Cane Bay? And he was actually asking because he saw my video and he saw me out having um, dinner and he was just like, I gotta ask, you know, are, is there anything you would stay away from in Cane Bay? And I go, well, Cane Bay is actually the number four master plan community in the country. A lot of people don't realize that. We have two of the master plan communities in the entire country. That's, that is uh, Nexon and Cane Bay. Honestly, I'm impressed. Cane Bay is gonna be roughly about 9,000 homes once things are all said. And, and so is Nexon. Nexon is gonna be relatively as large. So that's, saying a lot in the homes in the neighborhoods, the shopping, uh, the schools, the roundabouts, and finally the Facebook page. We're gonna cover it all, folks. Starting with reason number one, why you might not wanna buy in Cane Bay is the HOAs in the neighborhood elected boards. So some neighborhoods are better than others when it comes to HOAs, and that's because of the management companies. And a lot of people actually will call me up and say, Ryan, we don't wanna be near an HOA. But sometimes they're a necessary evil, especially in the South here where, you know, if you drive down the road, some of these back, back roads, you are gonna see some stuff that you're like, I haven't seen that refrigerator in a house since the 60s. Like, and that's just chilling on the front porch. And then they've got maybe three or four vehicles that no longer run just sitting on the front yard or is maybe a beautiful entryway into their castle of, of dreams. And you may be sitting here saying, well, that sounds fantastic, then that's, HOAs are not for you. Mm -mm. No, 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 Jose. Now, HOAs do force you to get approvals for exterior modifications. So, if you're painting your house, you're changing the color, maybe you want to paint your door a different color. Heck, maybe you want to put a pool in or even a fence. You are going to have to get approval from your HOA in the HOA board committee. And so, you may be saying, well, you keep talking about this board committee. What is that? So when the HOA or the neighborhood gets to a certain size, the builder, developer, uh, whoever's managing that neighborhood currently will turn over the board of to back to the, the neighbors, back to the people who live right there in the neighborhood. And then they can allow for modifications to the neighborhood. You want to add in a pickleball court or something like that. HOAs are going to go up. But these are things that the committee and the neighbors can vote on. And so you may be saying to yourself, well, okay, that's never gone wrong before in history. No, it should be fine. You're probably right. And sometimes it is a politics game, you know, especially if you're having something put in, uh, and I'll give an example a little bit later, but just, just good things to know. And you have to remember, you're gonna have to keep your yard neat and tidy, no letting your lawn, grow for two months and not mow it. You can't uh, not weed uh, or edge your yard. I mean, these are things that are just kind of common sense, but believe it or not, a lot of people don't have that. Oh, you got me! <laughs> so, some other things to consider, especially when you're looking at an HOA, is that if you do, if you are somebody who's like, hey, I don't plan on listening to anything they tell me, you're probably gonna get what are called fines or if you don't pay your dues, you're gonna get what are unpaid due fees and, and collections essentially, and then they're gonna put a lien on your home. Um, so it's it's good to follow the rules if you are considering an HOA neighborhood, which Cane Bay is all an HOA community. The neighborhood elected boards are fun. These are, are basically live-in neighbors who work on the board. Um, they generally don't collect a paycheck, so working might be the wrong terminology, but these are people who live in the neighborhood and are on the board that helps manage the budget, the amenity centers. So recently there has been some talk, and again, these are on the Facebook pages, so I'm gonna preface that in a minute here. Recently, some of these neighborhood amenity pools have had to be shut down um, due to things like people unfortunately defecating in the pool and then not cleaning it up. Ow! Things like that. 
these people, it's their job to go and kind of shut it down and call the pool cleaning company, have them come out. So these people do put in some time in the neighborhood. So that's why they're elected to the board. Now, I'm not sure how you personally feel, but a lot of this can sometimes be a political game. Let me share my experience. So recently there was a big chatter uh, in one of the neighborhoods and it was about sheds. People wanted to know sheds because honestly, when you come down here, we don't really have sheds. We don't have basements, but we don't have sheds. And so you don't see a whole lot of sheds in backyards. And so it was always said, no, 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 we can't have sheds until, until a board member was like, well, I want a shed. So guess what? Everybody's getting a shed now. So it's just something to consider. And if you're doing something you're not supposed to do, there's going to be those those Karens that are, man, they're, they're out there, they're out there. And I apologize to anyone named Karen that you are highly offended by that comment, but I just want to make you aware. It's the truth. It's the truth. Um, but there are those people out there that they're going to, they're going to get out there and they're going to look for whatever it is you're doing wrong. And they're going to send that photo right off to the HOA company. And you're probably going to get some sort of fine or warning in the mail. Okay. So something to be aware of, make sure you're checking your neighborhood's parking rules and restrictions because there are some neighborhoods that do allow you to park on the street overnight and then there's some neighborhoods where they're like, no, you can't. So it's just something to be aware of. Uh, make sure you understand that, especially when you're considering different neighborhoods and things like that. Um, some neighborhoods, you can park on both sides of the street overnight, they don't care, but then it feels like you're ducking and weaving as you drive through the neighborhood. So, so if it's a personal preference where you're like, I don't like that, then just keep that in the mind that some neighborhoods do allow that. Number two on why Cane Bay may not be for you, the roads and infrastructure. Depending on what your tolerance for traffic or roads in general, Berkeley County seriously dropped the ball in Cane Bay roads. And yes, unlike Nexton, Cane Bay roads and roundabouts are designed by the county and boy, did they drop the ball like it's New Year's Eve. I mean, what were you guys thinking? And, and, and like whoever allowed the one person to come up with like the way you maneuver the roundabouts in Cane Bay, I mean, that person should lose their job. Just saying. All right, let's start with the roadways into Cane Bay. So it starts out with two lanes, which would have been ideal throughout the entire neighborhood, but unfortunately they did not. Approaching the roundabout, or as I like to refer to it, the death circle, this comedic nightmare is almost to have an accident daily. Yes, I said daily. Unfortunately, the county says the markings on the roadways are correct, but the state troopers who actually have jurisdiction over this roadway say, nope, the county has it wrong, and therefore they do not ticket either party, but they will usually find the person who is exiting the circle while the outside circle person can also continue to proceed over right in front of the path of driver one. You may be saying, how is this possible? I don't know, ask Berkeley County. Apparently they have magicians there that understand everything. That's black magic. And they're like, hey, this is right, this is right. Yeah, yeah, this is right, go ahead. You drive that roundabout. I'm so smart. Continuing past Magnolia, and the two lanes actually zipper merge into one lane, for the rest of the neighborhood. Who in the name of Joe Biden thought this was a genius plan? I, 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 Guys, it's like you're driving and the person in front of you would be like, well, I'm not doing 45, I'm gonna do 38. And you are going 38 for the next six miles and it is painful. This is the worst. <laughs> Here's the other issue with the influx of homes being built in Cane Bay and the limited roadways, some that aren't even open yet and we're waiting, trust me. These areas, these roadways cause major congestion. So picture this, if you're trying to turn left off Cane Bay Boulevard, you might need to wait a while for a break in the vehicles to turn into the neighborhood. Even worse, if you live on the right side of the road neighborhood, you might have to wait extremely long to try and exit your neighborhood by turning left out of your subsection. Trust me, I see folks all the time come very close to accidents and almost having a multi-vehicle accident. And yes, they do have accidents there because of those problems. So you might be asking, well, Ryan, how do you combat this? I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not in the business of like giving, telling the county how to do their job. However, Fix the damn roundabout. All right, moving on. Coming up, number three, 
distance from downtown. So you might be someone who's moving to Somerville and the distance to downtown is gonna roughly be 40 to 45 minutes if you live in the middle of Cane Bay. That's also considering it's also afternoon traffic. So if you're commuting in the mornings or home in the afternoon, you might be closer to an hour. If there is an accident on the 26th, it's, it's gonna be an hour at least. This is why I really recommend folks who just relocate here, uh, don't mess with Google Maps, go right to Waze, uh, W-A-Z-E. It's a wonderful app to download on your phone here because it actually auto updates by the how many vehicles are in one area. So it will reroute you, do a smart reroute if you are in that area. So definitely something to consider. Also consider leaving early or staying later in the city in the afternoon. Um, I have a gentleman who he works downtown right smack and dab in that middle of the morning where you know you're gonna hit all the traffic leaving Cane Bay. So what he does is he leaves even an hour earlier, goes to the gym, gets in a workout, takes a shower, gets changed and cleaned up at the facilities and then goes to work. And then after work, he may run out and go get groceries before he goes home. So definitely something to consider folks if you wanna kind of make the use of, of your time but also not get stuck in traffic for over an hour, it's definitely feasible to, to do other things. Now, if you're watching all this and you're like, well, Ryan, King Bay doesn't sound that bad. Well, it's not, and you gotta reach out. Uh, I talk to people all the time about all the different subsections. There's pros, there's cons, and there's so many. So you've gotta get in touch with me. Give me a call, 843-226-5535. If you wanna see available properties now in Kane Bay, go to www buycanebay.com or go to buyfromrye.com but buy Cane Bay will give you all of the Cane Bay listings and uh, they're on there and go check them out. All right, jumping right back into it. Number four of why you probably would not want to live in Cane Bay. Oh, this one, the Facebook page. The Facebook page is no bueno, okay? Unless you like drama with a giant scoop of narcissism. To be honest, if you like those pages for the entertainment aspect, by all means, join it. It's Good time, you can have good laughs, okay? But I would just join your subsection neighborhood page. It's a lot less drama, it's a lot less adults acting like kids, to, and, and that's really what it is. Or if you're somebody on there and you have really good intentions, more than likely you're gonna be censored at some point, especially if somebody doesn't like what you're saying, like promoting a business on the wrong day, okay? Upset? I'm not upset. Why, why, why what makes you think I'm upset? Moving on, number five, the reason why you may not want to move to Cane Bay is the growing pains. The schools, I mean, the schools have wait lists, so a lot of people didn't like that last year, but they made it work for this year. A lot of people I know got in and didn't have a problem. They didn't have to do the wait list. So I think with the opening of Carolyn Lewis down the street, you have Nexton, you know, they've got their elementary school, they're opening, they're gonna be building the big uh, middle school. So you've got all these things, and I and I really think that's taken a lot of the, the pressure that, Hey, in 2022, 2023, yeah, Cane Bay schools really had growing pains because they didn't have any place for anybody, you know? But now, new school, new things happening, people have moved around a little bit, you've got different neighborhoods zoned uh, that were zoned Cane Bay are now zoned for new schools. So again, it's working itself out. The grocery store, so this is another one. Growing pains because we had at one point in time three, four, five neighborhoods that were all master plan neighborhoods that were in kind of coming in on the Cane Bay market, the Publix. And so that was the only game in town. And you'd go there, imagine going there on a Saturday, you can't find bottles of water, you can't find hamburger buns, you can't find hot dog buns. I mean, this was like first world problems, but that was what was happening. There was just so many people going there and everybody would, you know, get the chicken, get the hot dogs, hamburgers, they would all be gone. And then you're like, well, great, now I gotta drive to Goose Creek or Monk's Corner or something like that. So that has changed because now we have the new Harris Teeter open, plus they're gonna open up another Publix in Nexton. And I know a lot of people that were going to the Publix in Cane Bay are now over at the Harris Teeter. And again, that's eliminated a lot of those growing pains that we've experienced here in Cane Bay. The amenity center, so let's talk about that. So there's been some vandalizing increase, increase in wait times for things, DoorDash, Uber Eats. Um, the amenity centers did get shut down in some neighborhoods during COVID, but they opened back up. Some amenity centers now are closing down because they've had vandalizing. They've had you know people come there late in the evening and 
you know, do stupid things. Like somebody stole a pool pump from one of the neighborhood amenity centers. So it's stuff like that. It's that kind of behavior that ruins it for the rest of us. But that's what you have to remember is sometimes, you know, you're going to run into that 9,000 houses. You're probably going to have, you know, a few choice people move in that wouldn't regularly do stuff like that. And unfortunately, you just have to combat it by being, if you see something, you say something. Now, the other part of this is DoorDash and Uber Eats has really increased in their wait times. It's gone from, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes to upwards of 50 to 60 minutes. And by the time you get your food, it's generally cold. Um, people want it now. So people complain about this, this stuff. And I'll tell you, like, you, you got to remember when you're buying into an area that's growing like King Bay, things are going to come, but it takes time. You know, they got to put, you know, drainage in. They got to put, you know, plumbing for bathrooms, all this stuff, electrical. People just think they just lay this stuff down and it pops up overnight and it really doesn't. You, so if you're somebody that's like, hey, I want it now. If it's not there, if my whole boots isn't there, I'm out, Ryan. Well, you know what? then it's just probably not the area for you. This is why I have these conversations with people because about lifestyle in neighborhood, how close do you want to be groceries? Maybe that's not important to you. You know, some people say, well, I don't want to get on my golf cart and go have groceries. Well, you can do that in all of King Bay, but there are certain neighborhoods that are closer to the front of the neighborhood that'll get you a lot faster. So it's like, which do you want, uh, right? So again, my friends, you just have to think about this and you have to consider these are things that are going to play into your ultimate decision making when you're buying or looking for a home in Cane Bay. Well, my dear friends, you have made it through all five reasons and why you wouldn't want to move into Cane Bay. And to reward you for staying all the way through my personal three reasons why you wouldn't want to move to Cane Bay. We're all over that right now. Number one, the master plan is damn near perfect. The entire neighborhood. The bike paths, the master HOA fee is 113 a year, which is awesome. The layout for the schools and then the paths to the market, constantly adding where it needed. And guess what, folks? It's a no district improvement tax area. That's right. So you're not paying a district improvement fee each year in your taxes, keeping your taxes relatively inexpensive. And here's the other thing. The neighborhood has 25 miles of path. Okay, that's golf cartable, bike bolt. It's very smooth. Um, I find that the one thing I really like about our paths over a lot of other neighborhoods is that they kind of go through the trees, pre creating an element of, of safety because, you know, we got cars whipping down King Bay Boulevard. My thought is, well, what if somebody, you know, fell asleep to the wheel or had a medical emergency and went off? You know, there's nothing protecting the folks who are on the bike path, but they have rows and rows of tall pines that do protect the path. So again, that's another great factor of living in Key Bay is you have all that trailway. And then you can, you can go to the grocery store, you can go drop your kids off at school. You can pick them up from school. You can do everything on a golf cart and they're relatively inexpensive when you're considering purchasing one uh, from a car. Now, the other thing I really like about Cane Bay and their master plan is that it's not one or two amenity centers for the entire neighborhood, right? So. It's not like 9,000 homes are going to be going to two amenity centers. No, each neighborhood, each subsection has their own amenity center outside of two of them uh, that don't, but they share, they do have access to the other neighborhoods amenities. So let's talk again. Definitely, I think for a lot of folks who are considering Cane Bay as an option, that is a big benefit is not having to share an amenity center with 3,000 other homes, 4,000 other homes you can go there and you can actually get a spot in your own neighborhood. Now, the number two reason as to why I think you should consider buying a home in King Bay is a variety of homes and subsections that there are. And there's everything from the first time home buyer to your forever home person. So if you're on either end of that spectrum, it doesn't matter. This neighborhood has lifestyle, but most importantly, variety. So if you're somebody that's like, oh, I love the way you know, craftsman style home is the way it looks. There's neighborhoods that build those craftsman style homes. If you're like, hey, I like more of the Hardy Plain style coastal look, there's neighborhoods in Cane Bay that sell those kinds of homes. So again, variety and lifestyle is pretty amazing here. And the price per square foot is better options when you consider it in comparison to other neighborhoods like Carnes and Nexton. 
your your price per square foot is much much less, which means you can stretch that dollar. Even generally speaking, the lot sizes, if you can, if you narrow it down, you can find a nice sized lot in Cane Bay. All right, let's talk about the number three reason why I think you should live in Cane Bay. It's location and size of lots, right? Not to mention, you're right off of State Road in direct access to Monk's Corner. You're literally 12 minutes up the road to Monk's Corner. State Road, they're winding it, so it's going to be a little bit easier to drive uh, from the two-lane road that it, it once was. And not to mention, in Cane Bay, you have lake lots. So you have the man-made 350-acre man-made lake in the back. Guys, you can use that lake. You get an electric trolling motor, boat, kayak, canoe. Um, heck, I've seen people out with pontoon boats that have electric trolling motors. And they're like a six to eight-foot pontoon boat. And they're out there just cruising around, doing some bass fishing. You can definitely do that. Definitely would recommend catch and release. Don't eat them. Don't, nope, nope, nope. Just, just fish and release. But it's a truly unique neighborhood. And that's what I need. Lifestyle is fantastic. And it's just going to keep getting better. Remember, if you're moving here, you need to reach out to me. I am your neighborhood expert. I'm just not another realtor on YouTube. I too made this move with my family and growing family at that living here nine years and I've watched Somerville grow. And that's why I really became an expert in this area. If you want to buy a home, I can help you, but you got to reach out. You got to give me a call, shoot me a text, DM me, whatever you like to do. Set a carrier pension if you're old school. Until next time, my friends, I'll see you next time. You guys want to see more great neighborhoods like Cane Bay? Check out this video right here.